Well, hey, howdy, everybody. It's E Chip out with Contentment. It is first week of December, and this will be our first chimney sweep. Uh, so we get to see exactly how much uh, creosote is collected in the flue and uh, get it out of there. Now, those of you who follow our channel know that the only woods we have available out here in this part of the country to burn are spruce or dug fir or something like that, you know, some kind of pine and uh, a little bit of aspen. Occasionally, we may be able to run across some um, cottonwood, but kind of rare. And uh, so um, other woods that we may pick up, you know, when we go back to the center part of the country or oak or sycamore or elm or something like that. But uh, primarily, we've got spruce and uh, aspen, and that's what we've been burning in the stove for, for about the past month or so regularly. So it is time to uh, do a chimney sweep, and uh, we'll just see exactly how bad this is. So while Robert is inside uh, cleaning the house and uh, listening to Fleetwood Mac, I'm going to climb up on the roof and uh, see what we got. Kind of shiny. This was, you know, chrome or stainless steel or something when we put it on here. Let's pull it off and see what we get. It's pretty cruddy. see what's collected in there it's pretty cruddy cruddy stuff is collected around the rim here as you can see looks like we're ripe for a flu fire <laughs> here's some crud in there well, I, mean, I can pull that off not you can get further down the stove pipe with the uh, chimney sweep brush so I think I'll do that I'll just get the brush. Uh, I picked up this six inch premium chimney brush and it's steel, it's steel wire. Now, I understand that there are circumstances where you want to use a steel wire brush and somewhere you want to use a nylon wire brush. You have a, I think this is a stainless steel flue in the inside. And so I don't know if you're supposed to use nylon with that or wire with it, I just don't know. And nobody I asked could seem to tell me. So, you know, I got the steel figuring it was tougher. If anybody has any insight uh, in this and as to under what circumstances you would use, you know, the different um, uh, types of brush material, please enlighten me. But um, I've got a Sort of a semi-flexible rod here, chimney sweeping rod, that it screws into, or should screw into, not very willing. Um, <clears throat> and then on the end of the brush, there's a loop where I guess you could pull a rope, you know, through. You could pull the brush through with a rope or something like that. So let's, uh, let's see what we get. I ran the brush down in there, but having never really done this before, I'm not quite sure what to expect. It it brushed off the loose stuff, but I mean, and it feels it feels a little rough, but I mean, it's clean, I guess. I'm not quite sure what to expect, but I just keep doing this until I get it metal clean, or if I just get the big stuff, I don't know. Hello, Gabna. Have a chimney sweep, would you? <laughs> Where's Mary Poppins? She flew away because she was tired of your bullcrap. 
Chimchimmery, chimchimmery, chimchimchery. I think I'm as lucky as lucky can be. Chimchimmery, chimchimmery, chimchimchery. I'm at contentment. Oh, I'm lucky too. Well, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> I didn't look up any instructions on how to chimney sweep. Uh, or anything like that. So I'm just... you just get all the main stuff off, I guess. All the yeah, just all the big crud. Well, I don't know how much creosote is right here directly above the stove. This was pretty hot, but I did meet some restriction. I think right about here when I tried to push the sweep down. This is my first time doing this, and I want to know what's here because I'm unfamiliar with wood stoves and cleaning and that kind of thing. So I want to pull this pipe and see if it needs to be cleaned. I've also got this baffle right here this damper, and so, I mean, if it is dirty, I definitely need to get in there and clean it. The other thing is, is that there's a layer of fire brick in this stove right here, just under this um, flue opening, stove pipe opening, and I know when I sweep the chimney, it just falls, stuff falls right down on top of that brick. I'm going to pull this pipe, at least this time, and see what it's like so I know what to expect going forward. So. Yeah, that's some kind of accumulation because of the damper. I noticed that the past week or so that uh, it wasn't carrying smoke up the flue as easily. I couldn't close the damper fully like I could when we first got it. Um, I, I, it, it was getting to the point where I was able to close it less and less. And smoke would come out whenever I did try to close it almost all the way. So I figured it was getting dirty, not carrying stuff up like it should. Well, I already got a bunch out. Look, and there's a whole bunch on the ground, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we got creosote collecting on the. That might have been stuff that fell, but yeah, that's just. But there is some crud there that. Huh. Yeah, get in there with a wire brush and clean it, and then. And then you can see what I mean about that fire brick being in the way right there, and there is the, where the, where the smoke comes up at the back, but, and then you get some secondary burning in here. But there's no, there's no getting in there, you know, from the top to clean. I guess, I guess from now on, we just need to be used to getting in here like this and pulling the stovepipe and cleaning it. But there's a lot of creosote even inside that burn chamber. Here's the inside of the firebox. And back there, you can see where stuff's falling down, where Robert's knocking it down. That's our only access, unless... We can find a way to remove, oh, maybe we can, but I noticed there's a little bolt, a little nut right there, and a nut right there. My suspicion is, is that this little air wash or a secondary burn oxygen introducing thing, whatever it is, if you unbolt that and unbolt that, it'll those ends will slide out. You can remove this grate, the refractory material will come with it, and then it makes it a lot easier to clean the stove. So let's try that. Okay, so yeah, this little thing and that refractory brick material came out. This is a pain in the rear. It is. I don't but, know. you know what? I'd rather do it than die. <laughs> I'd rather have a better heating system. I'm lazy. How much better does it get than that? Well, look at how much it dirty it is in so, there. You don't want to get dirty. So, have you ever seen a solar power vacuum cleaner? Mm -hmm. You have now. This is powered by Buzz, our mobile solar generator who provides all of our electricity here at Contentment.
I went up and down it quite a bit. I hope that's sufficiently clean. I mean, I can see some metal. It's not completely clean, but that's pretty clean, I think, as chimney sweeping goes. And then, uh, of course, we vacuum clean, scrub that out as best we could, and vacuum that out. Okay, so I got that grate up there back into place, and I put the bricks back. As I was putting this refractory material back, I noticed that these end pieces won't come forward like this one was when I found it. And I think I've discovered that the back of this thing isn't supposed to be open. The fire is supposed to come this way and up. <clears throat> so we'll try that, and if we need to change it, we can change it. I'm cleaning with some ash paste. It does a great job cleaning this off, but you know, after a while, it'll probably get a little abraded, but look at that. Are you working? This stove didn't come with any instructions on how to clean it. We just sort of figured this out as best we could. The instructions say that, you know, to keep the window clean and allow the air wash system to work, that you need to keep your uh, wood at least four inches away from the inside of the glass, which we do. But for some reason or another, it still, uh, you know, uh, soots over or whatever you want to call it. Probably. And they, they say that if it does sit over, if you light a really good hot fire in there, it'll burn it away. And uh, we've been able to do that once with this stove. Um, keep in mind, we're burning spruce and aspen, which do not have really high BTUs. So we can't really get this stove super hot. It just it just won't get hot, real hot, uh, because of the, the wood we're burning. So I guess we're stuck doing this <laughs> um, until such time as we can burn oak or, you know, ash or something like that. <laughs> Well, you're a bona fide chimney sweep now, no, you and Mary Poppins. No, Dick Van Dyke. Yeah. Yeah, I can see why Mary Poppins left. <laughs> 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 anyway, this was an interesting chore. It was a um, mess. I, I think I call it a nuisance chore. I don't know if that's a good word, but it's for sure really, really super messy. And there is a lot of buildup. We've only really been using this one month pretty much on the daily and so we pulled off the chimney pipe thing and opened it up and it's like oh my gosh full of black nasty sooty grossness so um we'll probably have to clean it uh thoroughly every time you know the chimney pipe the inside of the chin uh, stove and everything i think we're gonna have to remove the stove pipe every time we want to clean and not just the damper, because it appears that the top of the stove, uh, that secondary burn chamber in the upper part of the stove, is collecting a lot of creosote, O2. And I don't know if that's because maybe the refractory brick was in the wrong position or something. Well, that's something we can find out. That, that refractory brick position may also be the reason why uh, we're not getting good air wash on the glass door. Thomas Schmidt from Thomas Schmidt Homestead Projects told us to throw a little salt in there every now and again. Mm -hmm. um, not too much because it's corrosive, but we are really, really dry here. 8% humidity pretty much year-round, unless it is snowing or raining. Um, so that's an option we will look into. And then um, maybe a creosote log, a creosote cleaning log. I've never used them. I've seen them before. So I don't know how they work. I never have worried about creosote in my life, and I've had houses with two chimneys. One growing when I'm, one house when I was growing up had a chimney. I don't remember my parents ever cleaning it or having anyone come clean it for us. And then another home I lived in had a chimney, and I never cleaned it. I lived there for years as well. It's homestead maintenance. It's <laughs> one of those things we're just going to have to get used to. Yep. So tell us what you think. I mean, those who would really like to hear from those of you who have experience with wood stoves. Uh, is what you saw on the top of the wood stove normal? Is it not normal? Does that look like a month's uh, accumulation to you? Or do you think we got a problem? 
Does that appear okay? I mean, we really don't know what to think with the wood stove. Okay, so now we've got a large bucket of ash. Well, maybe a small bucket, a large bucket. <laughs> we got a lot of ash. And uh, one of the things we do with it is we mix it in with our human manure sawdust. Now, here are two duds of sawdust we've had sitting outside for months. And uh, as you can see on top, it's nice and, you know, dark and ugly. In fact, it's frozen because it's got some moisture in it. Ooh, it's frozen way down. <laughs> but uh, as you can see, it's nice and dark. It's starting to, you know, decompose, stuff like that. It's good sawdust. Um, and so what we'll do is we'll take some of this ash and we'll mix it in with our sawdust. And uh, that really helps with our human manure composting. So I'll just dump this over top, uh, fill them back up, worry about tossing it later. Anyway, let us know what you think and uh, thanks for watching Contentment. By the way, uh, please consider sharing uh, this video, um, telling other people about us. Um, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, please subscribe. Um, hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and uh, like or don't like our videos. Either way, but please comment. Love to hear from you, and uh, you guys take care.